Let's do this. Yeah. Ah. Thank God. Welcome back. I guess we're back, right? We're back. We are. We're, back. we're all yeah. back. For the first time in about a year. Yeah. Almost a year, yeah. Our time is back on the air. And thanks for hanging in there with us. It's been a brutal year, obviously, to all of us. And we send our best to any family that's been impacted by this hideous, horrible pandemic. And, you know, I think it's touched a lot of us. And, but we've survived. Hope all of you, obviously, if you're watching, you've survived. That's true. Amazing how I put that all together. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah. Uh, it's our first show back. Yeah. So <laughs> we coincided with the Phillies still are not eliminated yeah. from the pennant race. So <laughs> Always a miracle. Good things yeah. are happening. The Eagles are going to play an extra game. Yeah, that's I'm right. Sure, I'm sure the players must love that. They're playing. Uh, did they, did the players they're playing John's a, favorite team. That's did right. the players room you can approve that? As yeah. of today, I think the, I think they, the league has the right to do that if they shorten the exhibition season. They did. I think. Yeah, there's three yeah. exhibition games. Okay. Well, today. We're going to talk about our dear friend Jorge Armenteros, the back in this university. Jorge has dedicated his life for the past 25 years, I've known him almost the entire time, to advancing the knowledge uh, that he has accumulated from many, many years of selling the product, smoking the product like most of us, and premium cigars and also pipes as well. Matter of fact, he's published his wonderful book, this is, this is edition two of the Tobacconist Handbook which he was kind enough to autograph to me. And more about that later, and there'll be a, 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 a visual sign on the show that tells you where you can contact the university, and we'll talk more about that as we go. Paul, what are we doing today? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna smoke? Well, we're going to have some fun. You yeah. know, many of you have probably seen or heard about doing blending seminars where you experiment with different kinds of tobacco and see how the blending process actually works. But Jorge has made this very easy for us to do today. Let me explain what we're going to do. We each have a little packet with five different little Puritos in there. And each of these is actually made from one leaf of one tobacco. And what we're going to do is smoke each one of them, a little bit of each one of them separately, and then start combining them to see how the flavors work together. And when we're all done, we're going to smoke the actual cigar that's made out of those same five leaves. Should we rate each one of these five little things? <laughs> <laughs> well, you should comment on them. Uh, first, we're smoking I mean, the They're cap. all the same size. We're smoking That's my the, first comment. The cap. Yeah, I would not do it that way. I'm actually going to suggest that we go from right to left. Right to left this time? Yeah, and start with a filler. Is that Lajero? Yeah. That makes it pretty dark. And the first filler... Is it Lajero? Lajero. Oh, it's Lajero? Have you forgotten that? Yeah, yeah, do you remember? Yeah, you think I ever knew anything. <laughs> That's true. I've been doing anything for the last year. That's true. <laughs> so, the first leaf that we're going to smoke... It, you, and Scott, you were almost right. You said it looks like Lajero. It's really dark. It's yeah. Viso, which is yeah, the next, next priming down. down from Lajero. It's got most of the strength. It's a little easier to work with, and it's not as intimidating as Lajero. Can we light up now? Uh, yes. Oh, let's. We, we've done this with um, Davidoff. Davidoff. At, well, and on the Mike show, Herklops. we've done it with Michael Hurtlock. Oh, yeah, Matt Sherman. Matt yeah. Sherman, yeah. Which is no longer. Oh, yeah. We did? Yeah. Is that here? Yeah. We're sleeping during the night. So, just so you know what we're smoking yeah, at this moment, it. this is yeah. Nicaraguan tobacco. It's called Azacualpa. It's a banno seed. And it it's comes really from sweet. a unique microclimate. It's got an orangey. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. It's actually tastes pretty good. It does. <laughs> actually, yeah. Well, it's the filler. One of the three fillers. It's a little bit sweet, and it has the tartness of orange. Yeah. Kind of amazing. Yeah, it's, it's uh, like orange. You can taste the orange, like peel. orange peel. Orange peel, yeah. Absolutely. Right on the middle of the tongue. I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Which is cool, because that's one of the, I think that's one of the keys to understanding the flavors that you're that you're tasting, 
is where you taste it on the tongue really helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm well, getting this, it right on this, the tip. Right on the front tip and I, a little really? bit down the two sides. Yeah. Really, I get it on the front tip, but most of the taste I'm getting right on directly so on the center. Of, unagi. Yeah, on the center of the tongue. Wait, it's not unagi. Umang. Umang. I, 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 I always think of sushi. So, we've got a sense of what this leaf is. It's actually pretty tasty. I it should is. point out that, it, that this little region, Azaqualpa, where they grow this tobacco, is the only place in Nicaragua that's north of tobacco growing areas in Honduras. I've never heard of that place. It's, Not if you think about the border between Honduras and Nicaragua at an angle, this is the part of Nicaragua that sits a little north of most of the border. That's it's north of Lake Yes, it is. I saw it though. The nickname. <laughs> I forget. I saw they have another thing. show going on. Yeah, here. that's their own private. Would you care to share? <laughs> no, I, I do not care oh, to share. Okay. So what we should do now <laughs> is put this down, but keep track of it so that we know what it is when we start combining. Okay. The second one we're going to smoke is also a filler. It's also from Nicaragua, but this is from Yalapa. It's a uh, Habano seed again, and it's a Viso priming again, which means it's going to have oh, some power. This is going to be stronger. Jalapa tobacco is strong. Retro Hell. Is it an old Jalapa? <laughs> an old Jalapa. Freaks down all the time. Oh, that's horrible. It's not horrible, it's just super strong. It's horrible. Has a distinct taste, for sure. Pepper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right very there. pepper. Yep. Right on the very right tip. Up. Yep, you got it. What does it say on your side? Can you read any of that? Home VI. Okay. Yeah. That's the, the Viso Prime. Okay. So it settles down the more you get into it. All right. Oh, that was the second retro hell was much better. Yeah, I said it settles down. <clears throat> Yeah. The next one we should smoke. Oh, a little bit of sweetness too. Mm -hmm. The one that's oh, you smoked the home. Is that what yeah, you smoked? The home. Yeah. yeah. That's from. That's a completely different leaf. It's even better. That's Ometepe tobacco. Oh. Yeah. From the volcanic island in Wasn't the middle that the of next Lake one? Nicaragua. No. Ometepe. So oh, which one? Well, Art said he shuffled the cigars. No, I didn't. <laughs> Here, tell us which one to, to smoke. So this we're all the same third one. one from the right. H uh, A Z A. No, we H A Z A. All yeah. right, you can smoke that. Six. Six. That's the third film. Yeah. Guess I'll smoke the wrong one. This is the as a well. This is going to be a little milder, but still a little sweet. That's a little sweet. It's very sweet. Oh my god, I'm going to put this in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I get a little buttery taste also. I was going to say cream, but. Yeah. That's a mouth, like more and of a mouthfeel. Great yeah. mouthfeel for a tiny little leaf at the back. Yeah. With almost nothing. It's actually really tasty. Yeah, I can. This is. I've smoked many, 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 many of these. I know, and, and I, I can taste is, that in that yeah, cigar. In cigar. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's absolutely. where that 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 that, that creaminess like. thing comes from. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like this one. Absolutely. We should start mixing this up. Now we should try. All right. So at this point, we've had all three fillers. Yeah. We should yes. smoke all three fillers or not? Well, first smoke any two together, and then add the third one. What's interesting is the second you put two of them together, the character changes totally. You may still, you may still be able to identify some of the flavors from when you smoked it alone, 
but when they combine, they don't just combine, they change. They do change. They do, and the, the, I'm smoking the first one and the third one now, and the, the first one is really overpowering the sweetness of the other one. I'm smoking the second and the third. That's what I'm doing. It's pretty good. <laughs> it is, it yeah. is good. It, you're right, it does balance it out. There you is don't get great, as much craziness. There is great logic behind the process of so selecting the first one. what thing is the first one. The first one and the third one. I thought the I thought the first one overpowered the third. Blending is always amazing to me because the blending leads to the consistency and how they can blend it year after year after year and come up with the same consistency is always always been an amazing trick. To me. I was I've, I've always been amazed by they can smoke a cigar and say. Uh, a sample and like, ah, it needs more of yeah. this. And I'm like, I, I wish I could. I'll, I don't think I'll ever get to that level. I mean, I think I know a couple things about cigars, but when it comes to that, I'm not even close. You're right. It does overpower it, the creaminess of this third one because it's because it's obviously because it's milder. Ooh, you're right. Number two and three together, it's pretty good. It's it 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 very tasty. Yeah. I think two and three together taste better than the three of them together. But I'm now we're going to have more changes because we still have a binder and a wrapper, and in this case, the binder and wrapper are very special tobaccos. It's kind of messy. So let's talk about the binder. Actually, we'll let's talk tasty. about the binder and the wrapper. Yeah. For a the three of them together are really good. The binder is the banda. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that's dark. Is that Brazilian? Yes, it is. And it's Brazilian Habano. It's uh, very much like the wrapper, but it's sun grown. And the main difference is its texture and its priming, and it controls the, the combustion rate. In this case, the binder is a little more about flavor than would typically be the case because Brazilian tobacco has such yeah. a distinctive yeah, flavor distinct. profile. It's very Plus it's sun grown, so you're going to get much, a lot spicier. Well, you're going to run out of matches. Not yet. Um, so that's the binder. Hmm. This tastes very earthy. That's exact, that is the defining character of this particular Remember what the binder is supposed to do. The binder is not typically wow. there for taste. Wow, very earthy. That's Ooh. that 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 ended That's a while changing. ago. That's yeah, changing. Over, well, you got to remember these cigars were from five years ago, and that I think at at, at that time they Quite were the crossover probably there. still don't like adding in as flavors. Yeah, for the longest time it was just a, a leaf that wasn't good enough to be a, a wrapper. Yeah. Well, it, and, it, and its it main purpose was hold the cigar together, together and even out the combustion so right. it burns straight. But it was never the primary no, thought right. about right. what it tasted like. Right. Years ago, they would never even talk about the binder as anything. Right. It was, it, just, we, it was taken for granted there was a binder. It, it had a mechanical purpose. Yeah, that's okay. okay. It, is a, it's, it is rough. Well, now combine it with the other ones. So this, in essence, would be a cigar with no wrapper. A full cigar with no wrapper. And doing it this way, and then adding the wrapper, it's about a 50 ring gauge. will allow us to explore the conventional wisdom yeah. about how much of the flavor comes from the wrapper. I live with it. I feel like I'm smoking a giant Jamaican. Uh, you don't even say a doobie. Doobie doobie doo. We do. We don't have to be Jamaican anymore. It could be Colorado, New Jersey, Washington, <laughs> D.C. New York is New coming York, around the bend. Pennsylvania will be coming around the bend. Yeah. While, while, while we're, we're puffing on that, just a quick note about Brazilian tobacco in general. It's grown in Brazil. The binder was grown in Brazil. Um, sure. Brazilian tobacco has been kind of obscure, even though it's been around for a very long time. In fact, funny story, 
Uh, the first major cigar to use Brazilian tobacco was the CAA Brazil. Yeah. 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 And when when uh, <laughs> Ken, when it's their best self. When Kanner Osgener was working on blending the Brazilian, all of the tobacco brokers that he was buying leaf from said, whatever you do, don't mention that it's Brazilian. People don't know it, and they won't like it. So he went in the exact opposite direction and called the cigar Brasilia. Uh, and ever since then, Brazilian tobacco has been growing popular, dramatically yeah. in popularity. Doesn't Bahia use one that's Brazilian? Well, and in fact, that's the region in Brazil where all of the tobacco is grown, is the Bahia region. Um, we can come back to that in a second. Let's talk about the wrapper in particular. Even for Brazilian wrapper, this is a very unusual wrapper. It's the, probably the first one of its type that you've ever encountered, and you folks out there have probably never encountered it. It's Brazilian Corojo. It's the first time Corojo seeds were planted in Brazil. It is again a viso priming. You know, the, the, the decision to make all of these viso has a lot to do with the level of strength of the cigar, but also the level of complexity of the cigar. So I think using viso across the board these is are all an viso? interesting experiment. Yeah. Really? Huh. Um, Corojo, of course, originated in Cuba in the 1930s, and it wasn't until the 1990s that they even tried planting any of the seed in Brazil. Christian did that. The well, he did it in he did it Honduras, Honduras, Honduras yeah. and that was the first place outside of Cuba. Right. It was a Christian. Then they went to Nicaragua. They went to uh, Ecuador. Eventually, there was this, this nutty guy who grew Ecuadorian Corojo. Mm -hmm. I wonder who that was. <laughs> Some guy in a hat. Shouldn't it be John Doris? Maybe Mr. V after him? Maybe after John Doris. Yeah, that's it. It's John Doris. I have to show you John Doris. No. Somebody sent Paul? me a, no. Somebody sent me a picture of Paul Major Village today. Oh, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Is it a so flat metropolis? Yeah. It looks, it looks like it. Skyscraper? Really? It looks like it. It's still called Paul Major Village? No, it's called Barrio Nuevo. Oh. Yeah. New, new, new yeah, Barrio. Yeah, new Barrio. Two, they got water there? But the street. Got water there, that runs up the middle yeah. is still called Calle Palmage. Oh, That's, nice. That they didn't Very change. Nice. So this is uh, very underappreciated. It's wow. strong, but it's oh. not overpowering. Yeah. It's yeah. direct sun-grown. But the most interesting thing about this is it's grown in fields that are also used to grow cocoa and they plow some of the cocoa under after each cocoa crop right. and leave it there, and let it lay oh, fallow, okay. and then plant Plow this tobacco. Yeah. So you don't it get had, to taste it, it all, though. You don't get a Wait until you combine. Yeah. So this is the wrapper. I, I want to watch Scott stick all five in his mouth. No, he's used to pudding. <laughs> Hard to keep them all lit and pop. I know. And pop. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do I, that. I'm going to smoke the whole thing. I'm going to smoke the whole thing. That's everything together. See, this, this wrapper tongue taster makes me even further go with my thought is the wrapper is not the high percentage in a lot of cigars, not all, but it's a lot of cigars that everybody gives it credit for. Because the four other components combined, you know, they're more flavorful. Yeah, exactly. You have to see how things temper yeah, each other. But, and they also meld together. Yeah, yeah. I get it. All right. Yeah. I'm done with that. Now I'm I just, ready to smoke a cigar. I just want to put a gratuitous plug in. The tongue tasting cigars, Peoria Dose, as well as two of the research and development cigars are available in all our stores. Uh -huh. uh, I would check that most of them. Most, most of our stores. I think most of them are sold most. out. And we have a very limited amount. We originally had about 3,000 of them, but they're actually going pretty quickly. You can buy two of the cigars, at, and you get uh, basically a free tongue tasting kit. So you can run and a, and a brochure to that follow along. Yeah. That explains how to do it yeah. and what's going on as you smoke each of the leaves. Are we the only stores that have these? 
No, there are there are actually a few stores around the United States okay. that that went to, when, when Jorge, you know, decided to dedicate all of his time to running the university as opposed to operating a retail store in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Uh, we basically bought up his remaining inventory because of the relationship that he knew oh, oh, oh. we would be good stewards of the product. So there are a few stores throughout the United States that may still have some, but there's no new ones going out. So, and these have been aged, and when you see the, the uh, cello, you'll see the yellow, how aged these are. So these are I like five years old. I had the cigar uh, several times, so I got them from yeah, little, and little taste of Cuba. Little taste of Cuba over in um, New Host. New Host, and then about right before I forget when when New Jersey passed the uh, the law where you can't discount cigars right. at all. I actually went over to Princeton and I bought a bundle of twenty five of these. Mm -hmm. It was like two days before they so I got I was able to get them on sale uh, mm -hmm. or at the at the bundle price before mm -hmm. they did that. I. And or I begged you for what two years? Oh, you loved it. Yeah, oh, I remember that. God, I love this. Stop talking about it. It's an excellent cigar. It's fantastic. And we're selling them at a very, very, very popular price. I mean, really popular. And if you buy two in a little kit, you get the little legend to follow along. You get the tongue tasters and two of these. I suppose we're getting more of these kits, can we? Hmm? We're getting more of these kits. We have plenty of them. No, okay, good. We have plenty of them. So this is the first in, time in the practical first time terms, if you look at the price of the cigar itself, two of them, which is what comes in the kit, right. means the rest of the kit is free. Yeah, it comes yeah, out the yeah, same. Yeah, no extra charge for the thumb tapers. Right. I you save two cents. <laughs> Do the retro out and getting the cocoa taste. Finally. I'm finally getting it. These yeah. cigars are delicious. That it's a fantastic cigar. Yeah. My whole really tongue is tingling with all the other yeah, yeah, all yeah, stuff yeah. at once. So Absolutely. We'll do that first. Yeah. I'm trying to get that out. But. I think that the finished cigar is vastly superior to any of the individual. Oh, yeah. Of it just yeah. It grows so it's much. All melted together. Yeah. And the age. Well, again, you said you know, five I'm, years I'm, old. Yeah. I'm oh. really getting that creaminess. Out of that second cigar, the second, second leaf. leaf we took, we tried. Yeah, it's very. I think it's very creamy. Yeah. It's very good. So when people talk about artistry in cigars, usually people think about how well they're rolled. You know, cigar rollers doing their thing with absolute yeah. precision. That maybe is more like artisanship. Blending is truly art. Because you're combining things that maybe no one ever combined before with your own idea of what it's going to taste like when you finish. Yeah. I, I've had somebody like blend a cigar, you know, was down in the DR. They're like, okay, what, what, what do you like in a cigar? And I said, I did, did, did this. And he pulls the wrapper and a couple of different things, put it together, and it was almost it was almost perfect. It was Probably fantastic. That was you know, you either smoke them when they're freshly rolled yeah. right there in the spot, well, yeah. or you got to lay them down. Yeah. And then, well, and this was this was this wasn't really this was just like bunched together, yeah, thrown together, right? Yeah, wasn't really, yeah. yeah. I still have one left when I blended one years ago. Yeah. Years ago, when I went uh, to Rocky's factory, um, I still have one left. He gave us five of them because we all blended it, and then we all went to dinner and had a bunch of drinks. But then uh, yeah. later, he gave us. Um, five cigars that we each blended with our names on it and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I still have one left. One, one of the things that blenders have to do that makes the job even harder is they're not blending for what it tastes like when they bunch it together, like when you smoked it. They're blending for what it's going to taste like six months or a year from now after it's aged up and, and merged. Well, yeah, plus they, they have to wait until three months, like they, after a month, two months, three months, six months. To keep tasting to uh, make sure it's what they wanted. But yeah, when they, takes but little. when they start, they have to be thinking about right. that's what the it's going to taste yeah. like later. Yeah. They have to know that, that what each one tastes like. You know, yeah. like you said, six months from now. I'd like to pretend I can do that. Yeah. No, I don't think yeah. anyone can no. do that. No couple, chance. Couple of other interesting things about Brazilian tobacco. Uh, unlike any other kind of tobacco, they do not cure it in barns. They actually build. It looks like a teepee, but they yeah. build a pyramid of stalks because it's all stalk cut. Brazilian tobacco is always stalk cut. They stack them 
and they leave them out in the open, in the sun, the rain, the wind, everything, until it's properly cured. Then they cut the leaves off and do the fermentation. Cool. Somebody should really? make a cigar from a stock. One, one yeah, stock. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there today. <laughs> I want to, uh, when, you see, when you see the information on the screen of how to contact Tobacconist University, uh, be sure to get yourself a copy. This is the second edition that just came out of the Tobacconist University handbook. It is chuck full. I mean, I've been smoking these things for close to 60 years now, and I learned a lot of things reading. I remember reading his original book 20 years ago, but you'll see information on how to buy a copy and how to take his courses, which are now available to civilians, as well as the trade. Uh, there's a separate course for civilians and a separate course for the trade. I mean, he's, he's a wonderful guy who's dedicated his life to this, and he's been a dear friend for many, many years. And we purchased his little taste of Cuba in, uh, in uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania, and he's just, just a great guy. Great guys. I'd like to spend a minute or two, if we could, since we only have a minute or two left. Uh, what did you do during the pandemic? I read. You read a lot. The, the great works, I'm sure. When we were close, when we were, um, actually some, yeah. Like um, it wasn't just Archie. Three Blondie Musketeers or, <laughs> or Beetle Bailey. Oh yeah, yeah. Andre yeah. uh, Dumas. <laughs> yes. Is it um, safe to say I'm the only person that worked? Damn there every single day in a cigar shop or yes. in the office yes. during this whole thing yes. between Florida and here? Um, yes. I'm close behind. You're close. Well, I mean, for the two months we were closed, I yeah, was there I, once I, know. I, I mean, I went in a couple And I was in Florida before. during the time. I renovated my bathroom. Well, yeah, that's cool. Not me. I, sat I was in Florida home. getting the first door. I sat home and walked my dog a lot. Yeah. Well, he's and uh, and right. you well, out again. The main uh, thing I did. I smoked a lot of cigars. I kept hearing people talking about how they were getting fat sitting around at home yeah. during the, the 28 lockdown. pounds, the average uh, gain. And I was terrified of that. So I spent the lockdown period losing 65 pounds. Yeah, wow. good for you. Good for you. Great. Yeah. 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 I, you know what's funny is I, the reason I, lo I lost weight too, and the reason was because I was locked in my room outside where there was no food. I'd sit out there all day. So I wasn't stuffing my... <laughs> if I'm just sitting there idle in the house, I'll just start stuffing my face with water. Well, I saw in Florida, there, there was a liquor store next door to us, in our store in Sarasota, and the trucks bringing in the liquor, which were before the pandemic, one or two a week, were coming every day. Yeah. I, and I think in Florida, at least I can say, they created a lot of new day drinkers. We should tell them well, that we, day drinking became a thing. We should tell them that we actually opened new stores during the pandemic. Yeah, we actually opened some stores. We opened a store in Pedler Village. Uh, a store in Doylestown, another store is coming any day or should be open by the time you see this in Sarasota with a beer and wine uh, component to it. And New Hope. Maybe and, New Hope? Yeah, no, no, New Hope we are. So yeah. Yeah, Just yeah. before. So I want to thank everybody for hanging in there with us. Yeah, thanks for watching. Smoke this cigar. It's called the R&D. R&D cigars, yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's joy fantastic. to be back. And, and, and again, wishing everybody, you know, a very safe, and, and, and getting through this as we're coming out of it now. Like Thank you so much. Cigar. Cheap cigars. Smoke <laughs> <off>. <laughs> That's that.